Hello everyone and welcome to EduSurge Clinics where we discuss some key topics related to common medical and surgical practice. We are continuing our case-based discussion series because a lot of people have liked this series and also it is important to understand that case-based management is a very important part of the new curriculum as well as it helps in managing patients in the practice. So today's case is a very rare post-cholecystectomy syndrome cause that is a post-cholecystectomy Mirizzi syndrome. This patient had a late post-cholecystectomy Mirizzi syndrome and was managed with a laparoscopic completion cholecystectomy. There are few takeaways from this case and that is why we are discussing this case in today's case-based discussion. So just a brief introduction on post-cholecystectomy Mirizzi syndrome. This can be due to subtotal cholecystectomy as a cause or in patients who have had a cholecystectomy but the cystic duct remnant was long. Now long cystic duct remnant is defined as a cystic duct remnant greater than 1 cm. Incidence is higher with laparoscopy across the series which have been published by experts. The incidence is 4.19% in laparoscopy versus 0.02% in open cases. The causes can be a calculi in the cystic duct remnant or the gallbladder remnant or a migrated clip. Either of these will compress the common hepatic duct and produce a Mirizzi syndrome after a cholecystectomy. Early PCMS is within two years and late is greater than two years. The options are open surgery, laparoscopic surgery and endoscopy and we will see how to select these options. Laparoscopic management is controversial, but it can be performed in expert centers. A brief history, this was a 48-year-old lady who had undergone an open subtotal cholecystectomy 18 years back. She had a mitral valve replacement 8 months before the presentation and was on dual oral anticoagulation. When she presented to us, she had right upper quadrant pain, nausea and postprandial bloating. When we did the investigations in blood test, alkaline phosphatase was elevated. Ultrasound showed a stone in the gallbladder fossa with query gallbladder fossa collection. Now remember that most cases of remnant gallbladder will have this finding on ultrasound. They will report an collection with stone. Okay, And this is very common in these patients. And the classic investigation in these cases is an MRCP. Okay. In this case, you can see a gallbladder remnant which is marked by the blue arrow in the left image and the stone in the gallbladder remnant which is compressing the bile duct. This compression is better appreciated in the T2 axial image which is seen on the right hand side of your screen where the red arrow shows the bile duct, the yellow arrow shows the stone. Right. So this confirmed the diagnosis of a late because the patient presented 18 years after the open subtotal cholecystectomy. So late post cholecystectomy Mirizzi syndrome. This patient underwent a laparoscopic completion cholecystectomy where we moved the sessile gallbladder remnant, identified the junction of CHD and CBD as well as the cystic duct. The key point was to dissect above the rubious circus so as to avoid biliary injuries. And if you want to know details of this case and the detailed management overview of this case, this case report has been published in British Medical Journal of Case Reports as an unusual presentation of a common disease. Complete blood counts, liver function test, ultrasound and then MRI with MRCP. Based on the etiology, the management is decided. However, if the patient has remnant calcula in cystic duct remnant, it is known as cystic duct remnant syndrome. If the patient has remnant calcula in the gallbladder remnant, it can result in cholecystitis, mucosal or carcinoma, which is very rare. If the calcula migrates to common bile duct, it can lead to cholecystitis or cholangitis. Both the remnant calculi as well as surgical clip migration can rarely result in Mirizzi syndrome as was seen in our case. Mirizzi syndrome was named after an Argentinian surgeon, Pablo Luis Mirizzi. He was the one who performed the first intraoperative cholangiogram in 1931 and the first published paper de describing Mirizzi syndrome 
was in 1940. Common hepatic duct obstruction is extrinsic in these cases due to impacted stone in the cystic duct or impacted stone in the infundibulum of the gallbladder. Now, there are a lot of classifications of Mirizzi syndromes. The common ones are McSherry and Sandys. A comprehensive overview of classification here is presented to you where type 1 is external compression of the bile duct by a stone impacted in the infundibulum or cystic duct. Type 2 has a cholecystobiliary fistula less than one-third circumference, then one-third to two-third. Type 4 is complete obstruction of the bile duct. Whereas type 5 is presence of a cholecystoenteric fistula along with any other Mirizzi syndrome. This fistula may or may not be complicated by a gallstone ileus. So these are some of the types of Mirizzi syndrome. You can go through this entire table and this gives excellent management options. However, our patient had a post-cholecystectomy Mirizzi syndrome. Like I said, there are two common etiologies. One is a cystic duct remnant calculi where now endoscopic management is also an option where they can go do a sphincterotomy, do a balloon or basket extraction or a lithotripsy or chemical dissolution or endoscopic manipulation of stone into gallbladder followed by completion cholecystectomy. On the other hand, when it is a gallbladder remnant calculi, preoperative MRCP with sphincterotomy and stent may be performed if the dissection is going to be difficult. However, you can also do a single stage completion cholecystectomy which can be laparoscopic or open as in our case we did a laparoscopic completion cholecystectomy for gallbladder remnant calculi. In these cases ERCP for stone retrieval as in cystic duct remnant calculi should not be attempted. So the management is completely different for the two different etiologies of PCMS. So to conclude this is rare one of the differentials in post cholecystectomy syndrome patients, we have an entire presentation on how to manage patients of post cholecystectomy syndrome, which you can see in the liver and bile duct playlist. As we have seen in these cases, axial MRI images in T2 are very important to be studied because MRCP may miss subtle compression of the common hepatic duct and laparoscopic completion cholecystectomy can be attempted for PCMS due to gallbladder remnant calculi, it is safe and feasible, but experienced centers and experienced surgeons are required. Threshold for conversion in these cases to open should be low. Thank you.